Well, hello and good morning. Welcome all. Pastor Tim from the Allen Park Presbyterian Church in Allen Park, Michigan, welcoming you to Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. How are you all? I know in just the next several minutes, some folks will be jumping on with us. This is Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions. It's a production of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church in Allen Park, Michigan. And we do this Monday through Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, live on our Facebook page. And then it's always available for later viewing, both on that Facebook page, but also on our YouTube channel, as are all of our services and such. So um, the way, if you want to have a little bit more knowledge about me, about the church, about what we believe, about what we're doing in the community, um, about how... We are uh, trying to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Hey, go to our website, www.allenparkpres.org, and you'll find just about everything there, including what I think is the highlight of it, is there's a prayer button there. And if you click on that, you can enter as much or as little information as the form requests. And if you then push send, it comes to me and to me directly. So, um, if, and again, um, prayer is a very powerful thing. And we can get through some very difficult times with the knowledge that other people are holding us up in your prayer. I had a wonderful congregant tell me yesterday as we prayed about his own situation. And he told me, he said, Pastor, I pray for you and your family every night. And uh, I teared up at that one, right? Just the knowledge that people uh, love and care and lift them up. So we're always here for that. All right. So I'll go down here and say hello to a few folks that might be joining us right now. Hi, Nancy. Happy, happy Ken. Hi, Linda Clark. And uh, Barry and Margo are with us. Good morning. Hi, Amy Bowerman. Good morning to you. Kevin Vaughn. And Chris, I'm sure. Hello. Hi, Tracy Crutz. Larry and Carolyn Thomas and Kip is with us also. Hi, Joan Riggs. You had a lot of goings on in your family last weekend. Congrats to you, too, right? Everybody's probably saying congrats to uh, the, you know, the, the bride and the groom and the parents. But did anybody say congrats to the, to the grandma? Congrats. Hi, Judy Hatch. Norma Bentley, hello. Sue Tucker, hello. Joy and Steve Yember. Oh, people jumping in here, and I and I keep losing here. I got to go back up here. Larry and Carol, Joan, Judy, pick it up. Janet Lyons, hello. Joy and Steve Yember, got them. Sue Tucker, hello. Sandy Sauerbeck, Helen England. Yes, continue to prayer for Becky England and her upcoming surgery for certainly, for certain. Okay. So, the news. Um, session meeting tonight. If you participate, um, you should have received last night the whole package of materials from our wonderful stated clerk, Andrea Andrea Carlson. Um, and if you um, didn't get it, just let us know, right? And uh, and so that'll be at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We also have a circle, Dorcas Circle, I believe, is meeting today. At one o'clock, hopefully, we're going to have a little bit of heat in the church by then. The furnace is getting um, wound up as we speak, and I have to say it's a little cold <laughs> sometimes. So I'm, all right, I'm chicken. I'm here. I'm in my home office. I'm going to head in after this to see if they couldn't at least get it a little bit further along the line. So, all right. Um, and uh, so that stuff, again, go and uh, see. Right? Go and see at the website. You'll see all that stuff, including this fabulous rotating, uh, it's like a wheel of fortune, I call it. <laughs> it's, as, and if you look in there, it's the header and different uh, things. If you click on it, it'll take you right to that event or that thing that's talked about. It's just wonderful. Carrie Van, Carrie Van Walligan, our wonderful communications manager, responsible for all that stuff. She does a wonderful job. Okay, so we have 16 devices 
online right now, and I'm going to go over here to the daily devotions that we steal. No, we don't steal it. We use uh, from the Presbyterian Mission Agency. And that's presbyterianmission.org, and you can see devotions. And this devotion that we do is one that will actually, in the course of two years, take us through the New Testament. And in the course of three years, take us through the Old Testament. And since we've been at this going on, well, since what, 2020, we're starting to get to that point. We're starting to become, some of you are old hat and have been with us from the very, very beginning. So guess what? We've really accomplished something together. All right. But before I do that, just kind of blowing all the stuff that's clouding up my mind. And I got to tell you, with uh, all of the reporting about the Middle East, I, I'm really cloudy in my mind. Um, it's just a terrible situation. You know, and, uh, so we'll pray about that. when we, we. So again, if you have a prayer request, put it in the comment section. Just say hi in the comment section. We'd love to know who's with us at various points during the day. Right? So... So I'm going to do this breathing exercise, and I breathe in for a count of five, I hold it for five, and then I exhale for five. And I invite you into it, if you'd like that moment of calm. Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. First devotion today is Psalm 42. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things, as I, I remember, as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Open God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. I just love that. I love that whole thing because I can pick this up and uh, I can say, man, have there been, there's been many, many days, right? And countless moments, right? That I've felt, I think, the same way as this guy surrounded by you know people that are just out to wound right and to tear down um, to build up themselves and themselves alone all those things that get really overwhelming at times and so this guy's and he says you know what but I've also seen your glory God and I'm gonna remember that right and even when people mock me for my faith because right? they're saying look at you look at the, the hard times so where's your God to deliver you into something like that? Well, maybe our God is bigger. Uh, not maybe. Our God is bigger than all of that. 
and it's the final destination that God has in mind as he accompanies us through these days. All right, let's go over, and we're going to hear about, uh, oh, I love this. We're going to hear, we're going to hear about this continuation. Hezekiel, uh, Hezekiah, the king of uh, Judah, he uh, dies, and his son Manasseh, Manasseh uh, takes over. We hear about his reign, um, but he really did. And then uh, there was some really bad stuff. So now we're going to hear about another king that follows them. And this is King Hosiah. And um, a really interesting part of, uh, of um, not only theology here, but this history um, is, it is wonderful, I think, in these things. So we're going to read 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 1 through 13. And we're going to get introduced to King Hosiah. Josiah was, uh, Josiah, I'm sorry, Josiah. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. He reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was uh, Jedidiah, daughter of Adiah of Bozakath, Bozkath. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Let's stop right there, remember? When we go through uh, kings, they either did evil or they, they walked in the sight of the Lord, right? Or the ways of the Lord, or the ways of their father, if their father was good. There you go. So, um, and we're going to hear about his father. You go, wait a second, his father was Manasseh. Well, it's the real father is David, right? The originator, the progeny. Okay, so he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of his father, David. He did not turn aside to the right or to the left. Into the 18th year of King Josiah, the king sent Saphon, Saphan, son of Isaiah, as Leah, as a Leah, son of Meshulam. I didn't read ahead today, can you tell? Meshulam, the secretary to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to the high priest Hilkiah. And have him count the entire sum of the money that has been brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the threshold have collected from the people. Let it be given into the hands of the workers who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Let them give it to the workers who are at the house of the Lord, repairing the house. That is, to the carpenters, to the builders, to the masons. And let them use it to buy timber and quarried stone to repair the house. But no accounting shall be asked from them for the money that is delivered into their hand, for they deal honestly. The high priest, Hilkiah, said to uh, Saphon, the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. When Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, he read it. When Shaphan, the secretary, came to the king and reported to the king, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of the workers who have oversight of the house of the Lord. Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, The priest, Hilkiah, has given me a book. Shaphan then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded the priest Hilkiah, Ahikam, son of Saphan, uh, Achbor, son of Micaiah, Saphan, the secretary, and the king's servant Isaiah, and said, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our ancestors did not obey the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. So ends this reading, the word of the Lord. So remember, I talked about reform, and they had you know, torn down the high places of worship where they had come, and, but we saw that that reform didn't stick, right? Uh, but now we have another good king that comes and really wants to know and says, well, you know what? The first thing we have to do is we have to rebuild because the temple has really kind of fallen apart here. 
So you guys have the money, right? Because people give money to the temple. So I'm ordering you to give it to the craftsmen so that they can go out and buy supplies and do the work and get paid for the work so that the temple looks good. And he says, and you know what? And you're priest, and so we're going to trust you to do this. No counting. So he talks about a little bit about how believing, uh, trusting, and faithful uh, Josiah was. Well, in the process of cleaning up the temple, right, um, they went to the treasury, and as they swept up the last of the shekels that were in it, they found a book in the corner. <laughs> it, it was it was the Pentateuch, the five books. And they go, and as they read it, the priest goes, um, get this to the king, because we're doing a lot of things wrong. <laughs> so they had lost. It wasn't because intently they had abrogated their worship at all. It was because um, it was just, they had lost, you know, and everything is like the game of telephone, right? Start off with the first person, give them a phrase, and then that person transfers it to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Maybe sometime, maybe somewhere in the middle of that string, somebody writes it down, but you know what? It's wrong, right? So they found the earliest versions of this and go, oh, we're doing a lot wrong. We got to change ourselves because we're just, we're on a road to perdition. And, uh, so this is Josiah's Reformation that we're going to hear about. And uh, there's an awful lot of prophetic work that comes during this coming time. And, uh, just an exciting time in the history of, uh, of Israel. Okay, here we go. Oh, by the way, have we ever started to do things uh, or, or continued to do things just because that's the way we were told to do it? You know? And... Um, you know, I, my favorite thing is, we, and again, we have every good intention, you know, but it just gets corrupted little by little every time it gets touched. And by the time you get eight or nine touches down the road, you know, maybe generations, it can be really have very little um, connection to what it was first intended to do. Right. So, and that's one of the things um, that um, in my ministry that I try to do is, we try, I try to connect people back to the sacraments more than probably you have in the past, right? The sacraments of uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper and how sacred they are and how joining they are of us in community. And, um, you know, and, and we have to remember because even that, the practice of the Lord's Supper in many places has just become so mechanical. Uh, that people just say, well, no, I got it, right, right, I got that, so now I'm fine, not without really experiencing the holiness of the moment. So anyway, uh, food for thought, okay? We'll move into our New Testament reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and uh, we're going to read 2 through 22, okay? So Paul, writing to this church in Corinth, and there was a lot going on because there's a second letter, and we kind of think that the second letter consists of two letters that were squeezed together, so it may be three. And he usually writes because he's got an issue with the church. So this church had lots of issues. But he also realizes how important it is to the kingdom of God that it you know, exists. So here we go. We're going to continue to read this. We talked about food, sacrifice to idols, and how it won't corrupt you if you eat it. But if you're told by somebody, we'd like you to share in this, war, in, in this our sacrificial food to our worship, and they're not, you know, and they're not Christian, because um, we wouldn't do that, then at that point you should say no. That was his teachings of that. Okay, here we go. I commend, uh, and he said, uh, be imitators of me, right, as, just as I'm an imitator of Christ. Okay, here we go. I commend you. Because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions just as I handed them on to you. But I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man. And the husband is the head of his wife and God is the head of Christ. Any man who uh, prays or prophecies with something on his head disgraces his head. But any woman who prays or prophecies with her head unveiled disgraces her head. It is one and the same as having her head shaved. 
for it is if a woman will not veil herself then she should cut off her hair but it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off or to be shaved she should wear a veil i'm going to pause right there we have a really hard time connecting with this passage right and that's why it's actually in parentheses when we do it because they said you could leave this out and the value of the reading wouldn't change at all um so um you know there's social social and cultural norms that are being reflected in this that just we've lost touch with right but he's talking about traditions you know he says you are passing on the traditions that i taught you that's great but so um but he's also talking about the freedom that we have in christ so this shaving and, and veiling is just it's a matter of showing respect for other cultures but also to god at the same time so we're going to move through this um and then he talks about the you know almost sets up this uh, ranked system you know christ man wife you know it's, it's not the point that he's trying to get at and and these verses, these particular verses, have been used to harm people before. So we have to be very careful with that. Uh, he's just saying that there's an order that God has, and in that time, that was the order. For a man, now we're going to get into the man. For a man ought not to have his head veiled, since he is the image and reflection of God, but the woman is the reflection of man. Yeah, that's a pretty, okay. For this reason, a woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man or man independent of woman. For just as woman came from man, so man comes through woman, but all things come from God. Judge for yourselves. It is proper for a woman to pray to God with her head unveiled. Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is degrading to him? But if a woman has long hair, it is her glory, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But if anyone is disposed to be contentious, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. I'm going to pause right there. So he just kind of threw this whole thing out. It must have been a big thing in that church. Now, here's the good stuff, starting with verse 17. Now, in the following instructions, I do not command you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the lord's supper for when the time comes to eat each of you goes ahead with your own supper and one goes hungry and another becomes drunk what do you not have homes to eat and drink in or do you show contempt for the church of god and humiliate those who have nothing what should i say to you should i commend you in this matter i do not commend you so ends this reading of the word of the Lord. That's the meat, right? The thing that they're really doing is when they have the Lord's Supper, it's kind of an open table, and those who have a lot and don't need to work, they go in and they gorge themselves. They eat everything. And they drink all the wine and they get drunk. And then people who are working, who are members, come together. There's nothing for them there. And he's saying, you come to, you don't come to physically fulfill yourself at the table, Lord. You come, why? Because spiritually it's joining us together into communion. All right, there we go. I talked a little bit about that up there, up on the other one. We have a short, short, short gospel reading, right? So if it's short, nothing happens. Mm, let's see. We're going to read out of the Gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 1 through 8. We left him yesterday um, in the Decapolis, um, across the Sea of Galilee, uh, non-Jewish area, and he frees two people from demons, and he throws the demons into the swine herd, and then has the swine herd run off a cliff and drown themselves in the sea. Um, 
and the people over there aren't too happy about it because he just he just sent their living crashing into the sea. All right, so let's listen for the word of the Lord. And after getting into a boat, he, Jesus, crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blasphemy. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is it easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had such authority to human beings. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Wow. Short. A lot going on. So when we left this, Jesus performed this miracle, this healing of the demonics and the treatment of them. And the people were in awe and told them to leave, right? They were filled with fear. I'm sorry. Yeah, not awe. They were filled with fear. And then now he comes and he performs a miracle within the Jewish community. And he starts to it by saying, he looks at a person who is paralyzed and he says, your sins are forgiven. And then one of the scribes, the people who are following along, the Jewish people said, he's blasphemy. How did he blaspheme? Because only God can forgive sin. And Jesus, he perceived their thoughts, not just what they said, but with their thoughts, he says, why do you so evil? This man was just healed. Why can't you celebrate the goodness of God and the wholeness that this man has? Rather, you think that it's evil, right? So, okay, you want to know who I am? Is it easier for me to say, your sins are forgiven, or to add a lot of words and say, stand up and walk, but so that you may know that I have authority on earth to forgive sins? All right, stand up and Take your bed and go home. He's uh, identifying clearly who he is. Who he is. He is the Son of Man. He does have the authority to forgive sins and to heal. And the crowds, when they saw it on this side of the Sea of Galilee, were in awe. And because of it, rather than telling them to leave, right, they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. That's powerful. That's really powerful. God's given that authority to human beings. Wow. Not everything, not to everybody, but everybody together has a little bit of that. And when we come together, that's when it's realized. That's why our prayers mean something. That's why our visits to the sick mean something. The laying on of hands means something. The sharing of the Lord's Supper and the glorification of God is in the accepting the, the gifts that God has given us as individuals and as a community, right? And then baptism, this wonderful thing that we have of the inclusion of anyone, but especially these little children in the acknowledgement that they're children of God and that we as adults are going to stand behind like the faith formation of that child. All of these things build up, not with evil in our hearts, right? They build up the body of Christ, which is what our words and actions are supposed to do. All right, enough pontificating from me. All right, um, Barry and Margo, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for putting uh, this stuff up. We've got to remember to pray for Becky and Hi, Don Jones and Katie. I hope you're with us, too. Barbara Wolf, good morning. I think that's it. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much.
I'm so glad that you joined with us today. We have 19 devices looking, so somewhere around 23, 24 people, probably, maybe a little bit more. And um, again, there's going to be a lot of people that watch this throughout the day. So thank you. I hope we, uh, our prayer at Allen Park Presbyterian Church is that this will be a useful to people throughout their day, either those who are joining us live now for, as a good morning, or those who join us during the day, perhaps during a break, or they finish their day with us. Either way, this is the message. God loves you, right? God loves you so much that he gave us his only begotten son. And it is through him and in him that we welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives, and we're transformed into people that we could never be on our own. Because if we didn't accept that, we would be pulled away from God and into the jaws of uh, the maw of uh, a world that just rewards the winners. And everybody else is a loser. We don't believe that. So thank you for joining us. And, uh, as we, uh, we're going to pray right now, and uh, I encourage you to join me. Here we go. Let's pray. Heavenly God, as we gather here, the first thing we ask for is a humble heart so that as we travel through this day, we can see the numerous provisions that you give to us, sometimes not directly, but through many different avenues and channels. So, in, with our humble hearts. We lift up those things which give us great distress, and we live in this world that is not yet the kingdom, and we see before us today terrible war that is resulting in separation of people and killing and maiming. Lord, it's in the area of the world that we call the Holy Land. There's people fighting over me. Lord, we need to learn how to share. So send among us people that might be able to help heal this rift. To stop the violence and to allow people to live peacefully together. We see this in many areas of the world. We need you, dear Lord. We want to lift up those who need healing, those who are facing tests or dealing with test results or approaching surgery or have been hurt and are physically healing and are still in pain. Lord, we lift up all that they may be given the best medical care possible and that they will be returned to loving homes as quickly as possible and to full health. And then, Lord, just accompany us to our day. Give us the opportunity and the foresight to see where you ask us to use the gifts that you've given each of us in new and unique ways. That's enough, Lord. If we could just have these things today, that's enough. We do ask this all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, all. God bless you. Remember this. God loves you. I love you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. We will see you here, God willing, and the creek don't rise, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. So in the meantime, just have a great day in the Lord. And if there's anything we can do, please reach out. God bless you all. Bye-bye.